For those gamers out for a scare, there is a lot coming this year. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 15 new horror games of 2022. Starting off with number 15, it's Madison, a first-person psychological horror game, a game where you start off in a dark room with your hands covered in blood. You find out that a demon is forcing you to partake in a ritual that's been going on for a very long time. This is a game with an actually pretty unique look and unique take on things. You use an instant camera to see what's going on in the spirit world on top of where you exist in the human world. Madison was actually supposed to come out back in January, but it got delayed. We don't have a release date, but it is coming to the Playstations, the Xboxes, and Windows this year. And number 14 is Stray Souls, a game where a gentleman by the name of Daniel inherits a home from his grandmother. It is, of course, a scary house, a haunted house, and over the course of the game you solve puzzles in order to get closer to finding out exactly what the deal with this house is. You meet a girl who knows way more about the house than you do, you see a screaming lady in the window, there's a story with branching dialogue where you can get obviously different outcomes, there's random events, but what I think is probably most interesting about it is that there is combat in this game. This game looks like a lot of games where there isn't combat, and the combat is oriented around found objects, like stuff that you find in the house. Their marketing materials say anything from a gun to a baseball hat, which means there's probably going to be a lot of different experiences. This sounds interesting to me. There is also a demo out now if you want to check that out. We don't have a release date for Stray Souls, but it is coming soon. And number 13 is Choo Choo Charles, which is frankly a bizarre looking game. Interesting though. So this is a game where you travel around an island on a regular train while the island is being terrorized by a monster train which has spider legs. That is the best description I can give you of what I have seen of this game. And for whatever reason, that is incredibly intriguing to me. The monster train is the stuff of nightmares. You go around essentially collecting scraps to upgrade the train to be able to fight Choo Choo Charles. And that to me seems to be the long and short of it. Now the island is really atmospheric. It's actually pretty unique looking. A lot of different locations. But obviously the main attraction is the title monster. And I don't know, it actually looks like like it's going to be a pretty darn good game. If it's not, it's a game that did an incredible job getting me interested in it. The developer of Choo Choo Charles said it's probably eventually coming to consoles, but will definitely be coming to PC sometime in 2022. And number 12 is Evil Nun The Broken Mask, which is a remake of the mobile game Evil Nun Horror in the School. You play as a child invited to a religious summer camp, and there is a scary nun who might hit you with a hammer. I mean, that sounds like a very silly concept, but it's actually fairly scary looking, especially if, if you have, like, fear of nuns. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there like that. The mobile game is actually very well received, and the PC version will obviously have much better graphics, and the Nun will apparently have much better AI. Evil Nun doesn't have an exact date, but it is planned for release in quarter four of 2021. At number 11 is The Quarry, a sort of old-school horror movie inspired slasher horror adventure, which is being labeled as a spiritual successor to Until Dawn. Now, as you know, Supermassive Games are the original developers of Until Dawn, so they could very well make a sequel, but I think it's good that they're not. The Dark Pictures Anthology has done a great job of setting a lot of different games set in a single universe, and continued the tradition of Until Dawn, as well as giving an over arching world. Now, the quarry is a different beast. It's also got a really big cast. Everyone who loves the slasher genre at least knows who David Arquette is, if not enjoys his work. I personally find him both very good in that kind of movie, as well as maintaining his sense of humor. There's a slew of other big actors and slasher name actors like Lynn Shay from Nightmare on Elm Street and Insidious, Ted Raimi from Evil Dead and The Grudge. Honestly, I'm really excited to see how this game plays out because I really loved Until Dawn. I think it's a very good game and I'm excited to see a, a more standalone title from the same developer along those same lines. The Quarry is coming to the PlayStations, the Xbox Ones, and PC on June 10th. 
And number 10 is Martha is Dead. Now this one's already out. It is set in the World War II era. You play as a woman named Juliana, and you're attempting to unravel the mystery of why a woman named Martha, who apparently is your identical twin sister, showed up dead. And during the course of what is frankly a, a beautiful game set in Tuscany, it tells a unique story about mental health that not only delves into the topic but uses it for mechanics there's a lot of attention to detail and it really does a great job creating atmosphere martha is dead is already out on pc and number nine is phobia saint dinfa hotel not a particularly normal sounding name set in a hotel operated by a sect that preaches a combination of science and religion. There's apparently an apocalypse to survive as you're shifting between different views of the hotel, presumably different time periods. There's a lot of exploration and puzzle solving as well as survival. It just looks like a unique game. I'm not even 100% sure what to make of it, which is something that certainly makes me intrigued. There is a demo available if you're looking to check it out. The release date has not been published yet, but it is coming sometime this year to the PlayStations, to the Xboxes, and the PC. At number eight is Scorn. We've talked about Scorn for a long time. It's also seen a few different development stages. This is a game that takes place in sort of a living environment, a techno body horror type place where everything's alive, including even your gun. I've likened it to looking like a Tool album cover from the mid 90s, and I still stand by that, although the aesthetic has changed a little bit to a more wet looking, for lack of a better explanation. It is a game that I've been excited about for quite a while. One of those ones where you hope it's really good because they've talked about it for a long time and it's always been intriguing. I have my hopes. Scorn is landing on the Xbox series as well as PC in October. At number seven is Evil Dead the Game, an asymmetrical multiplayer game, not unlike the Friday the 13th game or Dead by Daylight. It's that, but with Evil Dead. So you have a bunch of different weapons that you would never have in those games, including Ash's Chainsaw, and some, frankly, more bizarre potential, because Evil Dead is more willing to lean into the silly aspects of horror. It is multiplayer, but you'll also be able to play it single player if you want. Evil Dead the game is launching for the PlayStations, the Xbox series, Switch, and PC Friday the 13th in May. And number six is Slitterhead, a game from the creator of Silent Hill, who started a new studio called Boca Game Studio. This is, of course, the debut project. This actually looks like a pretty big departure from Silent Hill. It leads a little bit further into the grotesque with monsters that shape shift and just totally dismember anything in its way. And it seems like you're going to be playing as like a sort of ninja guy who takes a dismemberment back at them. The music is being brought to us by the exact same person who did the original Silent Hill. And frankly, the trailer was really well done, interesting, and I want to know what the heck he's doing. It seems like he's got kind of a all is not as it seems thing going, except for you immediately know. So I think that's going to be fun. Slitterhead is supposedly coming to PS5, the Xbox series, and PC, possibly quarter or four. If not, we'll probably be seeing it next year. We will, of course, keep you updated on this very interesting looking project. And number five is Sons of the Forest, the follow-up to the forest, which was a game in which you were looking for your son, who after an airplane accident had been abducted by some weirdos in the forest. This is similar, except you're not looking for your son. You were part of a paramilitary unit that seems to be going after these weirdos in the forest. It does begin with a similar problem. You, you do have a, a, a plane crash, but it seems like you might be armed this time around. That may be to your advantage or maybe may not. We'll find out. I'm excited for Sons of the Forest. I really enjoyed the first forest. And the sort of change in perspective is, in my opinion, a good shift. I like the idea of having a non-powerless person to survive as in this. And I also like the implication of the kind of challenge that you'll be getting due to that, which will probably be ramped up. Sons of the Forest is coming on May 20th, and it will be landing on Microsoft Windows. At number four is Ghostwire Tokyo. Ghostwire Tokyo is a game in which 
most of Tokyo's population disappears, and essentially there's mystical problems going on. There's ghosts, urban legends are coming true, stuff like that. You're investigating it, and you've got a bunch of special powers to do so, and this game is out and a lot of fun. It's extremely polished, has a great story, incredible graphics, an art style that takes advantage of tons of new techniques, looks very unique, and it really just manages to be something different. In a good way, not a bad way. It's out on pretty much every major platform. If you're looking for something new and different, but familiar and good, with a great story and great magic combat, Ghostwire Tokyo is where to look. And number three is The Outlast Trials, a game set during Cold War era in the same universe as the two previous Outlast games. This is not the third in the series, it's a prequel. There is still a, an Outlast 3 coming. And this looks to be centering on sort of experiments, which might fill in some blanks from the first two Outlast games. Of course, we can expect pretty similar mechanics, but the environment and context in terms of the story and events are completely different. I'm excited for that, and we'll definitely be playing The Outlast Trials when it lands sometime this year. And number two is the Callisto Protocol, a survival horror game, weirdly enough set in the PUBG Battlegrounds universe. This game comes to us via studio headed by the co-creator of the Dead Space series and takes place at a prison colony on Jupiter's moon Callisto. You're a prisoner and an alien invasion is happening. Now that coming from one of the co-creators of Dead Space sounds pretty good to me. It's landing on the Xbox series, PlayStation 5, and PC sometime this year. And finally at number one, Speak of the Devil, it is the Dead Space remake, which is taking the classic horror game in space and completely revamping it technologically. Apparently the map's not going to change, but we're not going to be dealing with any loading. It's going to be one smooth experience beginning to end. And there's also going to be additional encounters as well as vastly improved graphics and a physics system that builds on what is frankly one of the better physics systems in terms of a horror games combat, at least the most enjoyable that I can think of. I'm really excited for the Dead Dead Space Remake, I will certainly be playing it. They have not set a date for it, but it will be landing sometime this year. A few bonus games for you. The first is Dying Light 2 Stay Human, which is an improvement on pretty much every aspect of the original Dying Light, particularly the parkour. Really a good game. That's out on the Xboxes, the Playstations, Nintendo Switch, and Windows if you want to play it. We wanted to mention Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl because obviously we like talking about Stalker, but that one's probably delayed to 2023 unfortunately. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre game is another asymmetrical horror experience. Probably a good universe to do one of those in. Next is the Dark Pictures Anthology The Devil in Me, the final installment of the Dark Pictures Anthology's first season. This one is set inside a murder castle where a documentary film crew gets trapped and has to figure out what's going on. Our next game is Wronged Us, a narrative experience set in a small town with psychological horror elements. We don't have a release date for that specifically, but we'll probably see it either late this year or next year. And finally, Ill, which is a game that looks to make a realistic first-person horror shooter with real-time body deformation. It looks very interesting in terms of graphics. It uses Unreal 5. It's really impressive when you look at the footage. That is supposedly coming this year, but maybe next year based on the timetable they've been going on. We'll see, though. Obviously, we'll keep you updated. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.